Charles, you guys are a big holder in Ashland, have been for some time. This is the third activist that they've attracted in the past couple of years. What is it about this company that makes them such an alluring target for activists? Look, I think at the end of the day, um, the activist sees in a really, a really attractive asset base. They, they think the end markets are really attractive and, and, and possibly it's, a, it's a, the end markets here that they need to be consolidated over time. It's really hard for me to speak for what, what other activists um, see in the company. At the end of the day, you, you know, your scorecard as, an inv as a CEO is your shareholder list, and, and they've just attracted lots and lots of aggressive, possibly short-term oriented capital over time that has forced the company to, to pursue um, lots and lots of asset divestitures, and then, and then more recently, a more, more aggressive cost reduction plan. Our focus with the company has always been on, on really governance, uh, financial communication, um, and capital allocation and incentives. And in our dealing with the company, we found them incredibly open-minded, um, shelter maximizing for sure, easy to gauge with the board, and, and, and we felt great with the outcomes we got for all shareholders as it related to governance specifically, where we, where we have influence on, on two board seats and, and also on, on, on how they're going to approach incentives going forward. I want to come back to the, to the, the board seats and indeed the settlement that you reached with them earlier this year in a moment. But let's just talk about, about eminence for, for a second. So as Caroline mentioned, they've taken an 8.3% position. We don't currently know what they're intending to do. Uh, we haven't been able to get comment from them and also they, they haven't outlined that yet. Let's assume that there are sort of a couple of obvious options that they may push for. One is a sale of the business, one is some sort of overhaul. What do you think is the right course for Ashland at the moment? I think that's the important question that the board's going to need to evaluate, um, which is the role of the board is to protect all shareholders. The CEO, of course, reports to the board. Boards don't report to shareholders. Uh, boards don't report to CEOs. And I think, I think the board will have to decide, um, is today the day to maximize strategic value for, for Ashland's um, enviable assets, or, or should we best operate uh, the business for a little longer and, and, and then cons consider and contemplate maximizing strategic value. But ultimately, it comes down to the cred credibility, and this is a public company, and for one reason or another, the management team at, at Ashen hasn't won long-term patient capital. I think outside of Newburger, we, we can't find a long-only patient uh, provider of capital in their top 10 shelter list. And oh, by the way, Newburger has been involved in Ashen for, for over seven years. Um, so let's talk about the settlement. Earlier this year you reached, you added a couple of people to the board. Um, one of them, Guillermo Novo, uh, today actually is, is having a vote on the other company he runs, which Vers Versu Materials being sold to Merck. What was it that was so compelling about him? Why did you want to see him on the board? I, I thought he would, um, he's faced activists in the past. He, he, he spun out of, um, he became the CEO after spinning out of Air Products in 2016. His track record as a public company CEO has been, been flawless. He executed really an operate the business better strategy first and then maximize long term shareholder value. I think he's, he's a well known quantity in the special chemicals area. I think he has unique investor capital allocation perspectives and he's also very well known on both sides of the Atlantic. So, so so, especially chemicals, you, you have lots of lots of interested parties both in Europe and in the U.S. Um, and he's a known quantity um, both in Europe and in the U.S. So I think impeccable record, thoughtful, um, long-term shareholders like Newberger really respect the job he's done at Versum. Would he make a good fit for CEO? Um, I think it's it's hard for me to speak to specifically what Guillermo wants to do going forward. I think should, should his passion... What would you guys like to see? Our role is, is, to, is to... We spent an awful amount of time trying to put together a world-class board. This board is world-class today. It doesn't just include Guillermo. Um, it, in, it includes Craig Rogerson, Mark Raw. Um, Jerome Perabar, these are world-class specialty chemical executives that I'm just fortunate that sit and represent us as fiduciaries and other shareholders when the hard conversations take place. And I have no doubt that, that they'll make the best long-term decisions for all shareholders. Okay, let's just wrap on this. Uh, Newberger traditionally has been fairly quiet, not someone we think of as doing a lot of activist positions. In the last few years, you have become much more vocal, you know, Whole Foods notably, but other situations sure. as well. What's driving that change? Look, at the end of the day, Ed, we want to be the best fiduciaries we can for our clients' precious capital, and we uniquely positioned at Newberger to use all the tools in the toolkit to maximize long-term value. And I think 
We love hosting CEOs to have serious investing conversations. We've been doing that for over 75 years at, at, at Newberger Berman. And our model is on being patient, long-term investors. And I think when you are an owner of a business, not a holder of a business, I think those are two fundamentally different things. Um, I think your voice inside the boardroom comes with, 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 with more measurement and may, maybe more thoughtfulness for, for, for the long-term long investors. So, we think it's our fiduciary responsibility um, to maximize long-term shoulder value. Unlike others, we really focus on four areas, which I've mentioned. It's compensation, it's governance, it's financial communication, and it's incentives. And I'd say, as it relates specifically to Ashland, they have a huge role still to play in terms of, of financial communications. They haven't attracted the right long-term shareholders. Um, it's, it, it's unfortunate that for the five years uh, Bill Wilson's been CEO, he's attracted over five activist investors. So there's something there on the communication front as well that's not getting clearly communicated.